Good morning, everybody. How's it going out there? Are you awake yet? You need more coffee? Well, look at this guy. So I think all of you need to relax for a few seconds. So let's breathe in. And now breathe out. There you go. Thank you for joining me this morning. My final part of the oxygen series about is t basically titled Every Breath We Take. You know, oxygen is a chemical element, and it's a symbol of O, and it's the air we breathe as oxygen, and the symbol is O2. It's colorless, odorless, and it's a tasteless gas essential to living organisms, us out there. <laughs> the air we breathe is the same for everyone on Earth, except for some of the different environments and pollution, maybe. So the air we breathe is a symbol of freedom, as we all can breathe it, everyone, every living thing, including animals and plant life. So where did oxygen come from anyway? Well, it came from God, you know, and then basically he created a man and a woman and, and that he breathed life into both of them. In Genesis 2, 7, then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. In Genesis 2:22, then the Lord God made a woman from a rib that he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. In Isaiah 47, 5, it says, Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it. He gave breath to the people on earth. As I said before, breath in the Bible is far more than a physical exchange of air, you know, in and out of our lungs. Basically, it is one of the most profound symbols in Scripture. Every breath we take is a gift from God, an amazing miracle of life, amazing miracle. The word colorless has two meanings. Number one, it's clear air, and number two, that everyone or thing can breathe it. God looks at all of us, his children, no matter who we are or what we look like, that we can all breathe it. Newsflash, <laughs> breathing is important. My question again today is since we all share the breath that God had provided for us, why can't we all share the love he gave us with each other? In Ezekiel 37, 5, it says, this is what the sovereign Lord says, look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. So where am I going with all this? It says, Okay, so are you homeless without shelter? Are you full of sorrow? Are you alone and need help? Maybe you've lost someone in your lives or, you know, from maybe in a relationship or something. Or you, are you carrying around a broken heart? Are you seeking peace in your heart? Are you looking for Jesus and you're not sure how to find him? You know, I was there once and all of those questions that I just asked basically one day in a field, though, I lifted up my arms and I asked God to help me, please, and, and he showed me Jesus. In that very moment, he changed me. My old self died and my new self was born. Are you still drinking coffee? In Job 33, 4, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. And that's what happened. He gave me new life. He gave me new life. If Jesus could change this to my dreaded life, and believe me, dreaded life, he can most certainly change yours. Just ask God. He'll help you. He really will. He'll help you. And if you need a little help with that, you know, come to the Greeley Vineyard or find a vineyard church near you. Stay tuned for a little bit more information on that. But just remember this. Breathe. Remember to breathe today, okay? Breathe. That's it. <laughs> That's it, folks. So see you down the road. Have a great day. If you have questions about recycling your heart, come to the Greeley Vineyard Church or Google the Vineyard USA website and find a church near you. Contact them and there will be someone there to help you.